And welcome back to Muscatine High School for another Friday night of hoops here at MHS on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. I'm Joel Krausar with you on the call. It's another exciting night of Mississippi Athletic Conference basketball as the Pleasant Valley Spartans have traveled to Muscatine for the boys' home opener for the Muskies as Pleasant Valley coming in one and two off of two losses to Assumption and North Scott. The one, uh, and they defeated Central DeWitt in their first game of the season. While the Muskies are coming off two losses to Central DeWitt by 60 to 69, and then they lost to Assumption, 46 to 69. Assumption, one of the favorites to win the conference. If you haven't seen that team play yet, Amarion Ellis, the transfer from Davenport Central, now a Davenport Assumption. Heading to Austin, Texas to play basketball in the Big 12 for the University of Texas. But tonight we're focused on the Spartans and the Muskies. And on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network, we'll be back after a short break to break this one down for you. know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Welcome back to Muscatine High School for Mississippi Athletic Conference basketball action as the Muscatine Muskies play host to the Pleasant Valley Spartans, the Pleasant Valley sophomore team winning handedly over the Muskies. And that's really been kind of a theme over the last 10 years as the Spartans have won 18 of the last 21 meetings between the Spartans and the Muskies. Muscatine have three victories. Two came in the 2016 years uh, with Joe Wieskamp in the lineup for that. those outstanding Muscatine teams, one that went to the state tournament. And the Muskies looking to get off the, the losing streak, losing four in a row to the Spartans uh, dating back to 2016. Coach Wyndham here for the Muskies looking to change that tonight with a team that he thinks has a chance to do it. The Spartans are led by senior Jacob Townsend averaging 11.3 points per game. Also, Ryan Dolphin with 8.3 points per game. They're led in rebounds also by Townsend with eight boards a game and C.J. Riggins pulling down six. Uh, and Dolphin, the leading assist giver for the Spartans with three assists per game for the Muskies. Uh, a group of experienced players, Noah Yan. Uh, leading the way in scoring for the Muskies uh, going into this season. He's averaging just over 13 points per game. And he's been playing a lot of varsity basketball dating all the way back to his freshman year where he was a reserve on the playoff team for the Muskies. Uh, also, Reed Olsis, one of the leaders coming in for the Muskies, the senior forward. Uh, playing significant minutes last year as a junior. Noah Yan, again, leading with 13 points per game. Uh, Dante Lee also averaging 10 points per game. Reed Olsis at 9.5 points per game. Josh Diekman, the senior, with 9.5 rebounds per game 
Coach is expecting big things from uh, from Josh on the defensive end and on the offensive end, but he's really putting the work in on the boards and leading the way uh, as a rebounder. Dante Lee, the leading assist man for the Muskies coming into this game. And if you look at the statistics for this season, uh, there's some ones to kind of keep an eye on in this game. Effective field goal percentage. Now what that is, is that's actually taking into account the percentage of two points and three point baskets. And Muscatine with a 51.1% effective field goal percentage. And what that means is they're scoring at a higher efficient rate as where Pleasant Valley comes in scoring just 39.6% in efficient field goal percentage. So that's one of those advanced metrics that we're seeing more and more in sports that's actually taking into account uh, the, the percentage that the Muskies are making three-point baskets uh, on top of just their straight field goal percentage. But what Pleasant Valley does to teams is they hold you to slowing down the game. They will use uh, – they're one of the teams that's really a – the, the reason that I think many coaches want to see a shot clock implemented into the Iowa High School Athletic Association uh, rule book because they're going to minimize the amount of offensive possessions you get. They're holding their opponents to 44 points per game as we're Muscatine holding their opponents to 69 points per game. But Pleasant Valley is just scoring 38.7 points per game while the Muskies are scoring 53. So really opposing philosophies. Muscatine wants to get up and down. They want to run some set offense, but they really want to push the tempo as where the Spartans want to slow everything down. They're going to grind you out defensively and make you shoot a high percentage, and they're going to turn you over as well, uh, averaging 12.3 turnovers per game as an offense, so they protect the ball as where Muscatine has 24 turnovers a game. So they've been playing a little bit faster and looser with the basketball. Again, the Muskies starting off this season 0-2, while the Spartans are 1-2 coming into this game. And it's always a rivalry uh, whenever these two teams meet each other. And some, some legendary games have been played in this gym between these two teams. And who knows who's going to bring up a play of the game. And that will be brought to you by Rivo Plumbing and Heating and some of our other fine broadcast sponsors. River Rehab Physical Therapy, the Kent Pet Group, Toyota of Muscatine, Riots and Rebels Salon, the CBI Bank and Trust, Lutheran Living of Muscatine, Menards, and High V of Muscatine. Thank you so much for bringing Muskie Athletics to uh, the viewers all season long. And we're looking forward to uh, more continued support throughout our community. And we ask you to support the community as well. And speaking of which, at halftime, we'll have a special interview with uh, Lieutenant Bach, who is with the Salvation Army, who is still camping out in his giant red, red kennel and uh, to, to spur on the campaign for the Red Kettle here for uh, the Salvation Army. We're going to take another quick break, and we'll be back with the starting lineups after this. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home. And there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges. The Communities College. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. And we're back at Muscatine High School for the battle between Muscatine and Pleasant Valley for this Mississippi Athletic Conference uh, matchup here. Our starting lineups coming into this ball game presented by Eastern Iowa Community College. Starting Ryan Dolphin for Pleasant Valley. Joey Borbeck also getting the start for the Spartans along with number 20 Jacob Townsend, their leading scorer. 23 Matt Mickle fine player for the Spartans as well along with number 24 CJ Reagans and for the Muskies the starting lineup Braden Hufford number one the junior guard six foot one number three Trevor Diedrichs the six foot one four 
the Muskies, along with number four, Reed Olsis, the six foot four senior. And number 22, Noah Yan, the leading scorer, the 6'2 guard, another senior for the Muskies. And then number 32, Josh Diekman, the 6'7 senior, will start for the Muskies. Also for the Muskies, uh, one of the things they do have is a lot of length. 6'5", Nick Scholes, another senior coming off the bench. And 6'2", uh, Aiden Doffel as well. All guys who can guard multiple positions, which Pleasant Valley will require as this game goes on, multiple guys will handle the ball for the Spartans. If anything is, is true to form in previous years, again, this is a this is a team that we've seen a lot over the years. My, this is my fifth year covering Muskie basketball uh, as a broadcaster. And Coach Steve Hillman, the head coach for Pleasant Valley, definitely has a specific style and a way that he wants to play. He's assisted by Neil Green and Brett Algren. And for the Muskies, head coach John Windham, assistant coach, Joel Witchers and Abby Yan is also the manager for this team. So those are your starting lineups as we get ready for tip-off. We'll have the national anthem here shortly. Every three-pointer this season is brought to you by First National Bank of Muscatine. Our offensive player of the game is sponsored by Bear of Muscatine, also our Eastern Iowa Community College defensive player of the game. And as I mentioned, the Rivo Plumbing and Heating play of the game. Thanks for tuning in on discovermusketeen.com. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel if that's where you're watching it. Also, make sure you're liking it on Facebook so you can get up-to-date updates on all things provided by Discover Muscatine. We're going to stand now and listen to the playing of our national anthem. for Discover Muscatine on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Muskie girls are on the road right now. Uh, at the end of three quarters, the Muskie girls led Pleasant Valley 27-17. I'm trying to get a, the, a more recent update on that score. Um, but as of right now, as last known, the Muskies are leading by 10 on the road against the Spartans. Diekman. And Reagans will tip off here between these two teams as we are about to get underway. Both teams trying to get off of a losing streak. Muscatine will win the tip. That will go to Olsis who gets it back to Hufford. Over to Diekman at the top. Hufford drives, kicks it back out to Jan. Diedrichs gets it to Jan, who works it back to Hufford. There's a man-to-man -man defense from Pleasant Valley. Again, limiting offensive possessions is what they try to do. So you have to score when you have the chance. Hufford slashes down the right. Back around the middle, gets it out to Jan. Hufford to Jan, hands it back to Hufford. 
Pick and roll to Diekman. Diekman shot up, no good. Rebound, Olsis. And the Muskies leave with no points there as the Spartans bring it up. Gets it to Dolphin. Gets it inside. Good dig out. Reagans is able to rescue it, and he's going to get fouled and get two free throws. That was a strong take by Townsend. The Muscatine uh, defense defended it well, but Reagans there to pick up the pieces and draw the foul. So it's going to be one foul now on Josh Diekman as Reagans misses the front end. And way short on that, an air ball on that free throw. And so the Muskies will take over unscathed. Hufford comes back and gets the ball. Dolphin extends full court. Dolphin really putting a lot of pressure. Almost created a turnover there. And now he does create the turnover and gets the steal and the foul. So that's going to be the first foul on Braden Hufford. So in two offensive possessions for the Spartans, Muscatine has two team fouls. Spartans are looking to get to the free throw line early and often tonight. Dolphin now takes it over half court. Jan defends. Olsis on Townsend. Pass out from Townsend. Borbeck drives, kicks it back out. Shot up, no good. Matt Mickle misses the three. Braden Hufford with the rebound. So now they're going to call an offensive foul on Reed Olsis for a moving screen. So that'll be one foul on Olsis, one foul on Hufford, and one foul on Diekman. And we're only a minute and 54 seconds into the ballgame. Borbeck works it around the outside, looks for Reagans. Reagans covered up. Back out to Mickle, to Dolphin. Gets the screen from Townsend. Dolphin's going to drive and draw another foul on Hufford. And really, right now, the Muskies with four team fouls. That's the story at the beginning of this game. Schultz coming in now as Hufford will sit down with two early fouls. Dolphin posts it to Townsend, kicks it out to Mickle. Shot is up and good for three. Good ball movement from the Spartans on that inbounds play. Noah Yon will bring it up, the leading scorer for the Muskies. Only one shot attempted for the Muskies so far. Yon over to Diekman. Diekman drives right. And that's going to go off of Pleasant Valley, and so the Muskies will keep it underneath their own basket. Opportunity to run a set piece here. Inbounded to Schultz, who works it over to Diedrichs. Jan now has it at the top of the key, defended by Mickle. Diedrichs drives. And the Spartans called for a foul. Dolphin called for the foul. As the Muskies look to get their offense going here on this possession. Reagans knocks that pass out of bounds. Spartans are making it very difficult for Muscatine to get anything going once it tries to get inside the paint. So active with their hands, and they move their feet so well as a defensive ball club. Diekman, three, long, no good. He's able to get his own rebound. And Jan will reset the offense. Diedrichs, back to Jan for three. Shot up, no good. Rebound by Reagans. And now the Spartans will push. Here's Townsend. Dolphin, shot fake drive. And there'll be a foul on Nicholas Scholes. And we'll send Dolphin to the free throw line. 
It was good defense by Diekman. Stayed straight up. And the Muskies are going to call a 30-second timeout. What I was just saying is Diekman did a nice job of keeping straight up. And Scholes also did a nice job and the right thing to come and help on that. But got a little bit of wrist. And, and what is proving to be a very tightly called game by this group of officials. Muscatine with five team fouls with 4.45 to play here in the first quarter. And Pleasant Valley with just one. It's still just a one possession game though. Three nothing as Dolphin, Brian, Ryan Dolphin, excuse me, the 5'8 junior guard will go to the free throw line. Discover Muscatine Sports brought to you by Riots and Rebels Salon and CBI Bank and Trust. Dolphin makes the first free throw. He's a 54% free throw shooter on the season. Misses the second, rebounded by Townsend, who now gets it back to Dolphin. Begins to run the offense. They get Townsend posted on Olsis. He tries to come back over his right shoulder. And he goes up strong for two. Noah Yan drives right. He dribbles that one off of his foot. And that will be a turnover. And it'll be Spartan basketball. Seeing lots of aggressive defense there from Pleasant Valley. Muscatine benches. Communicating that they feel that there's a discrepancy in the team fouls on the scoreboard. We'll see if that has any effect on what's going on. And that ball... Well defended by Diekman. Townsend tried on the good post. And it hits the baseline and it'll be musky ball. Noah Yan brings it up for the Muskies. Yan works it around the top of the key. The lefty drives left. And now it looks like there's a foul called. I'm just not sure who it's called on. That's going to be C.J. Reagan's second foul. And checking in. Joel Lawler now checks in for the Spartans. Inbound to Diekman. Diekman gets it back to Jan. Jan trying to set up the offense. Dieterich gets comes off the screen. It's on the right wing. Towns there, excuse me, Mickel comes up with the loose ball, layup up and good. They're gonna have a delay a game. So this is a delay a game warning. He hit the layup and then he or someone touched the ball coming through the net. So it's gonna be a warning. Now the next time that happens, that is a uh, a technical foul, I believe, that is called. They may get two warnings. I need to relook at my rule book. And Jan will bring it up for the Muskies. So eight nothing lead for the Spartans. Three minutes to play here. Just over three to play in the first quarter. Checked into the ball game for the Muskies is Sam Emmert, the sophomore, and he turns it over. Mickle with the shot fake. Good recovery defense for the Muskies. Dolphin finds Lawler on the cut. Lawler drives, travels. So the Muskies will get the ball back. Still trying to find their first points of this game. The pace definitely favoring what the Spartans want to do. Deakman reverse pivots on the right wing. 
Gets it over to Scholes. He drives baseline. He's going to back it back out and turns it over. Lawler brings it up for the Spartans. Gets it over to Borbeck. Shot up, no good. It's going to be Spartan ball. As the Muskies try to match up on defense. Townsend has it at the free throw line. Finds Dolphin on the wing. Shot up, no good. Rebounded by Mickle. Townsend, or excuse me, that is Borbeck. Thinks about shooting it, and then uh, he passed it to the cutter. Mickle thought the shot was going up and started crashing the boards. So a key turnover there for the Spartans. Jan works the ball around. And then another turnover for the Muskies. Some miscommunication between the seniors. Dolphin will bring it up for the Spartans. Muscatine trying to get on the board here. Emmert defends, gets it to Olsis, and Mickle steps out of bounds on the baseline. Good baseline defense there from Reed Olsis. Forcing Mickle to step out of bounds. Jan, Scholes, Diekman, Diedrichs, and Emmert on the floor for the Muskies. Loose ball, Emmert fights for it. Timeout, Muscatine. Great hustle play from the sophomore. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Make sure you stay tuned throughout the game for five messages from our sponsors, Lutheran Living of Muscatine, Menards, and High V of Muscatine. We'll be back in the gym on Monday night as the Muskies, as the Muskie boys take on Iowa City High. That game was recently added to the schedule. <laughs> And the Muskie girls update coming in. The Muskie girls are victorious, 42 to 27 on the road against Pleasant Valley. They held Pleasant Valley to 16 points in the last three quarters. So fine defensive effort from Susan Orvis and her team tonight. A big win for the Muskie girls as Noah Yan tries to set off this Muskie offense. Unable to score so far here in the first quarter. Diedrichs off the right wing. Lawler defending. Mickle going to have a jump ball, and that will go to Pleasant Valley. As Matt Mickle right there to force that jump ball. Bryce Rubel brings it up for the Spartans, gets it to Townsend, back to Mickle. Over to Lawler. Townsend looks to skip pass, drives baseline, trying to pass it out, and Nick Scholl is able to come up and draw the foul on Townsend. Good defensive effort there for the Muskies. Just under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Emmert, back to Jan, 44 seconds to play. Scholes shot up, no good, rebound by Rowan, or excuse me, Borbeck. And Rubel now brings it up the floor. Over to Townsend on the wing, 28 seconds to play. Rubel, right around half court as Jan extends defensively. Diedrichs working hard to deny Mickel the ball. Lawler now just over half court, 10 seconds to play in the first quarter. Rubel, back out to Mickel. Great defense from the Muskies. Back cut by Townsend, who shot up and good with .6 seconds to go. A little Princeton back cut there from the Spartans. And Townsend able to get to the rim. The 
So Townsend will get one free throw as Diekman picks up his second foul. And that'll be the end of the first quarter here in Muscatine as Pleasant Valley leads 11-0 at the end of one. We'll be back in 60 seconds with more Mississippi Athletic Conference basketball. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. And we're back at Muscatine High School as Muscatine trails Pleasant Valley 11 to nothing in this boys Mississippi Athletic Conference. I'm Joel Krausar on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Brought to you by River Rehab Physical Therapy and Kent Pet Group. And right now this is really working into what Pleasant Valley wants to do, which is control the tempo, minimize shots, and uh, the Spartans now Trying to extend their league is Rubel. Bryce Rubel brings it up the floor. And Robeck is able to get two. Some of the Muskie faithful thought there was a walk on that, on that strong drive from Borbeck. Diekman now with two fouls at the top of the key. He gets it to Jan, the leading scorer. Hasn't even gotten a shot off yet for the Muskies. Jan back to Hufford. Gets it back to Jan. Braden Hufford, a good shooter in his own right. Three up and good. He missed most of the first quarter with two fouls. Now comes back with a bang with a three. Brought to you by First National Bank of Muscatine. Embert defends Lawler, who has it to Borbeck. Olsis down low, defending Townsend. And a travel now on Lawler. Excuse me. Yeah, Lawler. The twos and the threes look just close enough from the distance that I am sitting. We're in a socially distanced gymnasium here at the campus of Muscatine High School, the Muskie Fieldhouse. Only two tickets available for each player as Jan attempts to step back three and good. So the Muskies come out firing here in the second quarter. Cut the lead to seven with 6.30 to go here. There's no place like home. And Another three-pointer brought to you by First National Bank of Muscatine. As Mickel gets it back to Lawler. Over to Rubel. Lawler looking to find someone in the post in good post defense. A moving screen on Matt Mickel. And that'll be his first foul. John Windham's speech at the end of the first quarter to his team seems to be working. They're defending much better, and they're being more aggressive on the offensive end, getting some shots off. Braden Hufford brings it up the floor for the Muskies. Over to Nick Scholes. Scholes, Emmert, Hufford, Jan on the floor for the Muskies, along with Reed Olsis. They get it inside the Scholes. Scholes works hard, draws another foul. That time's on Joey Borbeck. That's his first foul. Emmert inbounds it to Jan. Jan pulls up for two from the free throw line. Easy bucket, cuts that lead to five. Just under five and a half minutes to play here in the second quarter as Matt Mickle takes it on the left wing. 
Dolphin now with a pull-up jumper, good. Pump fake by Jan, he crosses over. Over to Hufford. Olsis down low, kicks it back out to Jan. Hufford with a strong drive. Gets it to Olsis, stolen by Townsend, who runs the break with Mikkel. Blocked by Olsis. And Townsend was still able to finish that. Another three for Noah Yan. First National Bank of Muscatine. Liking all those threes falling for the Muskies here. Dolphin three up and it's good. So he has the answer. Hufford brings it up for the Muskies. Gets it to Scholes. Scholes gets it back to Emmert. Jan shot fake. Tries to get it to Olsis. The ball is tipped away and stolen. And Olsis is able to hustle back and create another turnover. Scholes gets it up ahead. Scramble. The Pleasant Valley will come away with and draw a foul. And that will be on number 15, Nicholas Scholes. That'll be his first foul, or his second foul, excuse me. So Dolphin will go to the free throw line as Lawler will check in for Mickel for the Spartans. On the floor for the Muskies. Hufford, Emmert, Scholes, Olsis, and Jan. Scholes with the rebound. And Hufford now sets up the musky offense, trailing by nine. Three-point shooting has been the story of the second quarter for the Muskies. Jan with three three-pointers. And that foul. Be on number 10, Joey Borbeck. And so now the Spartans are in the one-on-one -on -one bonus, but this next foul against Pleasant Valley will put Muscatine to the line. Raglan checks back in for the Spartans. Scholl's able to pull in the inbounds. And now Hufford will reset. Everett back to Hufford. Jan tries to drive left. A real battle from Olsis and Townsend down low trying to get position. Townsend doing a nice job holding his spot on the square. Jan drives. He goes up strong, no good. And then they're gonna call Jan for over the back. So that will put the Spartans now to the free throw line in the one and one bonus. Here with three minutes to play. Muskies have cut into this lead. They we're down 11 at the end of the first quarter. They're down nine now. Lawler trying to push it back to that 11. He makes the first. Make sure you stay tuned at halftime. We're going to have a live interview with Lieutenant Greg Bach with the Salvation Army as he is camping out in his own giant red kettle to raise money for our community. As Noah Jan drives to the free throw line. Gets it to Olsis. Olsis drives baseline. Kicks it back to Jan. Emmer thinks about the shot. And gets it back to Hufford. Sam Emmer, the sophomore, getting a lot of looks here. Jan drives, passes it back to Diekman, and Diekman's going to draw the, the, the off, or excuse me, the charge, and he'll go to the free throw line. That was close, though. Josh almost extended that arm enough to draw the, the charge, which would have been his third foul. It's 
So I'll put Diekman to the line. Trevor Diederich checks back into the ball game. And Emmer will go back to the bench. Diekman misses the front end. And Dolphin will bring it up the floor for the Spartans. Mickle to Rubel. Rubel to Reagans. Dolphin pulls up. Good rebound from Reed Olsis. That was good shot selection by Dolphin, just unable to make it. Diedrichs over to Jan. Three is up, no good. Rebound Dolphin, and he'll push. Stolen by Jan. Jan with the Euro step, finishes with the left hand. And here come the Spartans. Rubel to Lawler for three. Shot up, no good. Reed Olsis with the board. And Mickle picks up his second foul. Strong rebound. From the all-conference linebacker, Reed Olsis. And showing what he can do on the basketball floor here as well. Olsis will go to the free throw line. First shot's up, no good. Lawler will get the rebound and push. Dolphin works it around to Rubel. Now Lawler on the wing. Crosses his man over. Dolphin for three. No good, gets his shot though. Blocked by Olsis. Rubel takes the three, rebound Diekman. And they're gonna get Reagans now with his third foul, holding Reed Olsis, and that'll send Olsis back to the free throw line. So foul trouble, a real concern for both teams right now. And that will bring number 44 into the ball game for Pleasant Valley. Have to check the other roster because that one is not on the Andrew DePape, the six foot six sophomore, as Reed Olsis hits the first free throw. Second free throw good for Olsis. As the Muskies cut the lead to six. Put on a trap here. As Rubel dribbles it, he gets it out to Mickle. As the Muskies working really hard on the defensive end. Hufford makes Rubel have to bring it out. Muskie defense working hard under 35 seconds to go here in the half. Dolphin drives left up and good. He's been the story so far for the Spartans with eight first half points. As Hufford will bring it up for the Muskies, try to play for the last shot. Hufford gets it to Jan. 10 seconds to go. Jan drives. He's going to back it out, split the double team. War gets over to Diedrichs. Three ball up, long rebound by Mickle, who's unable to get the shot off. And that will take us to the half. Good first half here at Muscatine High School between the Spartans and the Muskies. Muscatine trailing 23-15. We're going to take a three-minute break, and we'll be back with our halftime show on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. There's no place like home. And Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home. And there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. 
You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Almost. And we're back at Muscatine High School. As they trail Pleasant Valley Spartans 23-15. It's halftime here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network, and we have a real opportunity to go live to the Red Kettle as Lieutenant Greg Bach is camping out at the Red Kettle uh, right outside of High V. And uh, Greg, how many nights have you spent in the kettle? Yeah. So far, I've been night two. So this is my first school day in the kettle. I will be up tonight about 5, five o'clock. Uh, uh, so it's your, so second, it's your night second night. And, uh, and uh, what are your, what are your goals, goals this year, this year for the Salvation Army, Army our Red, our Red Kettle campaign? campaign? Yeah, so the kettle campaign goals, maybe my Christmas goal is 90,000. So that is 10,000 for the kettles, the, the combined of virtual and in-person kettles, and then uh, 90,000 in like mail appeals. So that's the next step for that. 90,000 overall. And so hopefully uh, we, can, we can get it and be able to continue services for probably two years uh, at the rate we're providing. And then, and then some more. We have to do and Kent logo on top of the Salvation Army logo out there at Muscatine High V, where they are raising as much money as they can through the Red Kettle campaign, which is one of the only fundraisers, the biggest fundraiser for sure, for the Salvation Army. And I can speak from experience. Over the last five years, I've had the opportunity to volunteer and spend a lot of time uh, in planning and organizing and excuse me, volunteering during this Red Kettle campaign, and every dollar stays in Muscatine. And they do whatever they can for our community. And they are... Uh, I didn't understand what food insecurity was in Muscatine. It was something that was always discussed, but I kind of poo-pooed it as someone who grew up in Muscatine in a middle-class home. Uh, I didn't understand that many of my classmates didn't know where their next meal was coming from, and that they were... Uh, uh, I, because it's it's a, it's a pride issue. People don't want to talk about it, and that's okay. But we need to have organizations like the Salvation Army who have a robust food pantry or need to have a robust food pantry to help fit the needs of our community, no questions asked, figuring out ways to help those who are in need. 
um, and I've toured the facility several times, and I do uh, have on good word from some of the board members that a few weeks ago it was almost completely empty. And the Freezing for Food initiative that happened a few weeks ago uh, did a good job of, of restocking uh, that facility because we always think about this in the holiday season and it's a time of giving and the time of perpetual hope that we need to protect our, our most vulnerable. And in our own community, our most vulnerable are many times those who are without homes and who without their, their uh, adequate food and, uh, and shelter. And unfortunately, in the times of COVID-19, those numbers have increased uh, as the economy and job market has changed and shifted. Many people are out of work and under no control of their own, and they are being forced to uh, seek out services and force is a good thing because that means we have the services and the infrastructure in place in Muscatine uh, to take care of those who need it. And they don't have to worry about where that next meal is coming from. So if you haven't donated to the Red Kettle campaign, uh, make sure you head out to High V. Say hi to Lieutenant Greg Bach, who is in his second night camping out. And again, we had technical difficulties, so we got disconnected. But thank you, Greg. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. I know you can hear us. We can't hear you, uh, but we are rooting for you, and we appreciate all that you've done for our community since you uh, and your family have come here in the last few years. And uh, it's impressive things that our Salvation Army and many of the other uh, organizations that help assist the Salvation Army. And if you have some extra time, talent, or treasure, they're always looking for volunteers and donations at the Salvation Army here in Muscatine. Uh, so make sure you go to the website. You can go to discovermuscatine.com where there's more information on how you can help and benefit uh, the Salvation Army here in Muscatine. With that said, I'm going to take another quick break. It's halftime as the Muskies trail the Spartans 23-15 to 15 on this December 18th of Muscatine calendar. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Um. And we're back at Muscatine High School for the second half of the Muscatine Muskies and the Pleasant Valley Spartans. Here at Muscatine High School, it's the home opener for the boys here at Muscatine as they trail 23-15. to 15. It was 11-0 at the end of the first quarter, and Noah Yan scored 10 points in the second quarter to bring the Muskies back uh, to within eight here in the, as we begin the second half. 
Uh, it has really been a, a game of fouls. There were 10 team fouls against the Spartans in the first half and eight against the Muskies. The starting lineup for uh, the Pleasant Valley Spartans here in the second half is Dolphin, Reagans, and Reagans has three fouls. Townsend, Borbeck, and Mickel. Mickel with two fouls, Townsend with two fouls, and Borbeck with two fouls. Brian Dolphin leading the way for the Spartans with eight points as Noah Yan drives and kicks back for the Muskies. Long three for Hufford and good. Three-pointer brought to you by First National Bank of Muscatine as the Muskies cut the lead. Dolphin works it over to Borbeck. Jan defending. Hufford with the tall task of defending Brian Dolphin who has slashed, he's shot. He's done everything he could in the mid-range game to try to get this lead extended for Pleasant Valley. Good defense for the Muskies. As Townsend now brings it to Mickle, who gets it over to Borbeck. Townsend now drives, kicks out to Mickle in the corner. Good defense for the Muskies. But again, Pleasant Valley comfortable playing patient basketball. And this, folks, is why we need a shot clock in the Iowa High School Athletic Association. Muskie's looking at a 32-second possession so far. As Dolphin keep, continues to work it around. He'll take the runner shot up. No good. That's going to go off Dolphin's foot. It'll be Muskie ball. Great defensive possession. So the Muskies will take over, and PV comes out with a 1-2-1-1 a one, one, one press look here. A denial man-to-man -man press, actually. As Dolphin makes Hufford bring the ball the full length of the court. Contested. Diekman over to Jan. Jan shot fake. He goes up, shot up, and good. That's 12 points for Jan. As Dolphin now brings it up the floor. Over to Mickle. To Rohrbeck. Reagan. That's going to be another turnover for the Spartans. The defensive level and intensity coming out of the locker room for the Muskies has been something we didn't see in the first half. 5.55 to play. They're going to call a travel on Hufford. I think that was a good call. Hufford just getting a little ahead of himself. And that will be another turnover for the Muskies. As they trail by three after being down as much as 13 in this ball game. Hufford on Dolphin. Hufford has uh, two fouls. Also does a nice job with Townsend. Reed deflecting it, getting another steal. And now he'll slow it down and give it to Hufford. Jan defended by Mickle. Diekman, who sat out most of the second quarter with foul trouble. That three ball by Hufford is short. Rebounded by Mickle. And the Spartans will reset their offense. Trevor Diedrichs really working hard, keeping Mickle from getting the ball back. Now Jan on Rohrbeck. Townsend on the wing. Shot fake. Dolphin now brings the ball back to Townsend. Townsend trying to go off the dribble. And that will be another foul by Hufford. Hufford is a longer guard, especially defending someone like Dolphin, who he, get, he gives up about five inches to, or he's five inches taller than. He's got to attack that with a little bit lower center of gravity so he doesn't have to reach when Dolphin tries to blow by. Easier said than done. Townsend called for the travel. Good defense by Reed Olsis. The leading scorer for the Spartans has really been frustrated all night. He has seven points, but he's had to work very hard for those seven. 
If you're following along on Facebook on the Discover Muscatine feed, the first person to respond with the phrase, Go Muskies, will win a gift certificate from Sal Vitale's here at Muscatine. As soon as the Muskies score. Ooh, no good. So remember, respond with Go Muskies after the next Muskie bucket, and you can win a gift certificate to Sal Vitale's as that rebound is pulled down by Reed Olsis. You can follow us on Facebook at Discover Muscatine. You follow along with the game for your chance to win after the next musky, bus musky bucket. Excuse me. So Ambert drives for the musky shot up. That foul is going to be called on the floor, but a strong take from the sophomore. As it will be musky ball underneath their own basket. Noah Yan inbounding for the Muskies. Gets it to Emmert. Back to Yan. Yan defended by Joel Lawler. Lawler, Townsend, Reagan, Rohrbeck, and Dolphin in the game for the Spartans. And Diedrichs. Diekman. Diedrichs drives. He draws a foul. On the floor for the Muskies. Diedrichs, Diekman, Yan, Emmert, and Olsis. Townsend's going to pick up his third foul. Reagans and Townsend with three for Pleasant Valley. They get it inside to Diekman. There's a double. Gets it to Olsis. And they're going to call an offensive foul. And uh, boy. That's one at the next level is not a foul, folks, because it's in that restricted area, which doesn't exist at the high school level. That's when I think the official's going to go back and review and, 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 ha and maybe second-guess his call because Reed didn't really generate that much contact. As Dolphin will bring it up the field, or the field, the floor for the Spartans. 3.30 to play here in the third quarter. Pass back to Rohrbeck. And that three is good. Jan will bring it up for the Muskies. Over to Scholes, and Scholes just checked into the ball game. Trevor Diedrich tries to feed the post, turns it over to Reagans. Rohrbeck works it around the outside. Over to Dolphin. Gets it inside to Rohrbeck. That shot's up, no good. Rebound by Diekman. Jan works it over to Diedrichs. Gets it into Diekman. Strong take by Diekman, unable to finish. Rebound by Reagans. But that's a good look for the Muskies. Ryan Dolphin works it over to Lawler. Lawler to Townsend. Two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Or just over two minutes to play. As Pleasant Valley tries to slow it down. Muscatine was able to speed this tempo up here in the third quarter. And now the Spartans go into their slow, slow control offense. I don't have a lot of so sports soapboxes, folks. But one of them is the shot clock, and we need it. It's time. We saw what Des Moines Christian did last week, holding the ball for an entire quarter. The state of Iowa needs to take action, and we need a shot clock. Dolphin into Townsend, back to Dolphin. A little two-man game. Three-point up. No good. Rebound by Jan. He looks to push. Six-point ball game here as the Muskies try to get this back to even. Shot fake by Jan. Three-point up by Emmert. No good. Rebound Reagans. And now Townsend will push it up for the Spartans. Townsend will dribble. 
Get it to Dolphin. Scholes with the steal. Oh, steps out of bounds. Great effort there by Nick Scholes, the senior. And Mickle will check back into the ball game. He'll give Townsend a break. Dolphin over to Lawler. Lawler gets it out to Rohrbeck. Shot fake by Mickle. Under a minute to play here. Lawler drives. Kicks it out to Mickle. Thinks about a shot. Now Lawler. Dolphin gets it to Reagans for the layup. As Jan will now bring it up for Pleasant Valley. Another turnover for the Muskies as Rohrbeck goes up for the layup, and they're going to get the and one. And that will be three. That will be the fourth foul on Nick Scholes. Twenty-four seconds to go here in the third quarter. Now it's send Joy Rohrbeck to the free throw line. Braden Huffer now into the ball game for the Muskies. Brought to you by Kent Pet Group and Toyota of Muscatine. Huffer will bring it up for the Muskies who trail by 11. They got this lead cut down to as close to as five points. And Pleasant Valley has worked its way back to an 11 point lead. Deekman with three seconds. Gets it to Schultz. Schultz shot up in. And one opportunity for Nick Schultz here for the three point play. As he's fouled with point six, point six seconds to go. As Nick Schultz goes to the free throw line and it's good. Cuts the lead to eight. Dolphin unable to get it off in time. And that's the end of the third quarter here with an eight point lead for Pleasant Valley. We'll be back in 60 seconds with more Mac basketball on Discover Muscatine Sports Network. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. Welcome back to Muscatine High School. It's the beginning of the fourth quarter as the Muskies trail Pleasant Valley 31 to 23. Muskies cut the lead down to five. Pleasant Valley extended it back out to 11 and now we're at an eight point deficit as Diekman, Jan, Emmert, Hufford, and Olsis on the floor for the Muskies. 
Dolphin Lawler, Robeck, Townsend, and Mickle on the floor for the Spartans. Here's Lawler at the top of the key. Emmert extends out to get the count started. Dolphin now gets it out to Rohrbeck. Muscatine doing a good job of keeping good extended defense as Pleasant Valley tries to run this clock out. This possession has been a minute. Good back cut by Dolphin. Robeck shot up, no good. Rebounded by Lawler who gets the put back. Into Diekman, Diekman shot up, blocked. Good help defense there by Lawler. Now we'll see how long it takes Pleasant Valley to take their next shot. And I'm highlighting this just because it's really a great strategy that Coach Hillman has employed for many seasons when they get to these close end-of-game situations. They had two shots in a minute and 12 seconds in their last possession, and now we're going on a 38-second possession right now. A standard shot clock is about 35 seconds in most high schools throughout the state of I throughout the country. There's Lawler, takes a baseline, gets it back out to Mickle. Again, this possession, no shot has been attempted, and we're under we're over a minute of possession for Pleasant Valley. And there's a turnover. There's a carry by Jared Townsend. Excuse me, Jacob Townsend. Called several Wilton games in my day. Jared Townsend, an outstanding pitcher and multi-sport athlete for the Beavers. We got a timeout here on the floor. And it looks like this is going to be a full timeout. So we're going to take a quick 30-second break. We'll be back with more Muskie basketball. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. And we're back at Muscatine High School as the Muskies trail Pleasant Valley 33-23 to with 5.38 to go in the fourth quarter. It's Muskie ball. As they look to cut into this lead, Pleasant Valley got out to an 11-0 lead. That was the end of the first quarter. Muscatine battled back to within five. The, they, the lead was extended going into halftime. And now the Muskies are doing what they can to try to Get back into this ball game, trailing 10 points with 5.38 to go in the fourth quarter. And Noah Yan leading all scorers with 22 points for the Muskies. It's Jan, Hufford, Diedrichs, Olsis, and Emmert on the floor for the Muskies. Emmert drives baseline, gets it back to Hufford, shot up. No good, rebound by Robeck, Borbeck, excuse me. And now Dolphin will bring it up for the Spartans. Lawler over to Townsend. Dolphin drops it baseline, then they get it back to Dolphin at the top of the key. 4.56 to play now. Mickle will go to the free throw line. That was a strong take by that young man. Matt Mickle. It's a great, great all-around athlete. Called several football games, and we've called his name in those games as well. Fantastic football player for the Spartans. He 
He's got four points tonight for Pleasant Valley as he goes to the free throw line. And he completes the three-point play. Uh, Diekman checks into the ball game for the Muskies. Jan's pass is stolen by Mickle. And now Dolphin will bring the ball up. Hufford picks him up at half court. Olsis and Mickle battle up front, up top. Now Dolphin works it around to Townsend. Diekman forces the pass back out to Mickle. But they're going to call a foul. They're going to call a push. I believe that's on Trevor Diedrichs. Excuse me, Olsis does get called for the foul, his third foul. 13-point lead for Pleasant Valley with just over four minutes to play. Take by Pleasant Valley. That's a good pass. And Brobeck able to get his 13th point of the night for the Spartans. Noah Jan off the curl, gets it to Hufford. Diekman thinks about a three. He drives. Deflected by Townsend. And another turnover for the Muskies. Townsend runs the floor, gets the layup. Gets the steal on defense, beats his man down the floor, and gets the layup. Townsend, the leading scorer with nine, well under his average tonight. And that's going to be a foul. Lawler grabbed Jan on the good drive. So that will bring in Rubel will check in for the Spartans. Diekman will come out. Hufford has the three on the inbound. Good rebound by Olsis. Goes up strong, and he's fouled. However, he was fouled on the floor. So Jan, excuse me, Diedrichs with a three. Hufford, Diedrichs, Scholes, Olsis, and Jan on the floor for the Muskies. Mickle goes baseline. Works it out to Lawler. Lawler, three long. Rebound, Hufford. As the Muskies try to push their tempo. Diedrichs gets it to Scholes. Also skip pass to Jan. Diedrichs gets it into Scholes. Drop step by Scholes up. No good. Rebound by Borbeck. And now Dolphin will bring it up the floor. Dolphin smart player. Tries to get Hufford on his hip and draw a foul. Also knows not to go too fast to control this clock. Under two minutes to play here. We're almost under two minutes to play. There's the steal from Diedrichs. Braden Hufford over to Jan. Jan for three. Shot short. Rebound by Brorbeck. And Townsend will turn it over. Good, good defense by the Muskies. Jaime Martinez now in for the Muskies. A minute 49 to go here. As number 34, Carson Nepple, 6'5 sophomore. 
checks into the ball game. Martinez to Olsis. Olsis back to Martinez. Gets it to Hufford. Hufford drives, shoots. That's good. Eighth point of the night. Muscatine trying to trap, create a turnover here. I think we have a timeout by Pleasant Valley. They're getting a 30-second timeout. Good call there by Coach Hillman to get the timeout as the, the jump ball was inevitable there. In our post-game show, we'll have our Bear of Muscatine Offensive Player of the Game, our Eastern Iowa Community College Defensive Player of the Game, and our Rivo Plumbing and Heating Play of the Game. So make sure you stay tuned for our post-game coverage. Other fine sponsors of this broadcast, Lutheran Living of Muscatine, Menards, High V of Muscatine, CBI Bank and Trust, Toyota of Muscatine, Kent Pet Group, and River Rehab Physical Therapy. A minute 16 to go here. Muskie's trying to get a defensive stop and maybe get a run here. Get some threes, maybe a couple buckets uh, at the free throw line. They're two fouls away from the bonus. But right now, Pleasant Valley just trying to salt this one away. Spartans trying to get it inbounds. They're able to get it to Mickle, who's immediately trapped, but is able to split it and get it to Dolphin. Throwback goes up for the, for the layup, but he's fouled. And that will send him to the line for two shots. Throwback go to the free throw line. He makes the front end. That foul was on Braden Huffer. That's his fourth. Zach Bokoff into the game now for the Spartans. They lead by 16. Alex Hunter now into the ball game. Orbeck makes the second. Now JT Muzowski checks in. So, with the exception of Dolphin, a whole new lineup here for the Spartans with a minute to go here in the fourth quarter. Olsis drives, that shot's blocked. Jan able to get the rebound, but is, that ball is deflected. Now Jan goes up strong, and he's going to go to the free throw line. JT Mulzowski, I believe, is going to pick up the foul there. That will send Noah Jan to the free throw line. Jan 100% at the free throw line this year. He's 5 for 5 so far. So he's certainly a guy that the purple and gold want to see at the free throw stripe. And I, <laughs> broadcaster Jinx misses his first free throw of the season. So we're under 50 seconds to play. And it's the Spartans. The Muskies in Jaime Martinez. Scholl is really doing a good job on post defense there. Zach Beckoff, he, he gets the basket. Hufford will bring it up for the Muskies. Martinez for three, that's long, rebounded by Jan. Jan goes up and he gets a layup. Under 10 seconds to play here. So Martinez is gonna, I believe, get called for the foul, yep. Jaime Martinez goes for the steal, ends up picking up the foul, and that will send JT Muzowski to the free throw line. Makes a 
makes the front end of the one and one. Makes the second of the free throws. And the Muskies will just dribble off the clock. And that will do it for this ball game as the Muskies lose 46 to 28 for Pleasant Valley Spartans. We'll be back in two minutes for our post-game show right after this on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. Welcome back to Discover Muscatine Sports Network. I'm Joel Krausar. The Muscatine Muskies fall at home against Pleasant Valley, 46 to 28, and the Muskies fall to 0 3 at the beginning of this season. It's early in the season. The Spartans advance to 2 and 2, uh, all in Mississippi Athletic Conference play so far. Leading scorers for the Spartans, number 10 Joey Borbeck had 10 point, excuse me, 15 points. To lead the way for Pleasant Valley. Noah Yan, the leading scorer for the Muskies, had 15 as well to lead the way for the Muskies. And that brings us to our Bear of Muscatine offensive player of the game. Noah Yan, our offensive player of the game tonight, as he again he scored 15 points. Really did a fantastic job, especially in the second quarter. He had a, a nine point uh, run on his own where he was able to get Muscatine right back into this ball game. And and then Pleasant Valley kind of put the clamps on him in the third quarter. He was able to get a couple more buckets than the second half. But he finishes with 15, and he is our Bear of Muscatine Offensive Player of the Game. Our Eastern Iowa Community College Defensive Player of the Game, Reed Olsis. Holding Jared, excuse me, holding Jacob Townsend to nine points. Again, that's, a, that's an athlete that's averaging uh, well into double figures, the leading scorer for the Spartans, one of their most explosive players. Uh, they held him to nine points, and a lot of that had to do with the physical, tough defense of Reed Olsis, our Eastern Iowa Community College player of the game. Our play of the game presented by Rivo Plumbing and Heating. If you look back at the second quarter, Noah Yan had a nice step-back three-point basket, which brought Muscatine within five points, and that was the play of the game for the Muskies. Presented by Rivo Plumbing and Heating. Pleasant Valley games are always frustrating. We mentioned in the pregame show that's uh, their fifth win in a row now over Muscatine, and they're 19 and three against the Muskies in the last 10 seasons. Muscatine hasn't beaten them since 2016. That team that went to the state tournament, led by 
Class 4A all-time leading scorer, Joe Wieskamp. So right now Pleasant Valley has the number of Muscatine. It's a very different style of play, and uh, Coach Steve Hillman has been doing it right there for a long time, and he uh, he's no different this season, uh, keeping Muscatine at a low point total and uh, controlling the possessions. And so that's going to do it from us here from the Muscatine High School Fieldhouse. I'm Joel Krausar on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network saying goodnight, and we'll say see you again on Monday as the Muskies host Iowa City High, which is a new addition to the calendar. So make sure you like Discover Muscatine on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you have alerts as to when we go live because we'll have all sorts of action. We had the Pleasant Valley Muscatine swim meet last night. Hope you caught that. If you didn't, you can go check it out again on the YouTube channel. Lives forever, which means my words do too. So that's a little bit scary, but we'll see you again on Monday on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network.